Welcome to another presentation about the Carolina Bays. Today I will talk about my new paper that was published in January of 2025 in the journal Earth Science Reviews. The paper is titled, Reply to Holiday et al. regarding the Carolina Bays. You may recall that in September of 2023, one of my videos discussed the paper by Holiday and 11 co-authors titled, Comprehensive Refutation of the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis, YDIH. My video pointed out some deficiencies. In particular, the references used to try to prove that the major axes of the Carolina Bays do not truly point toward the Great Lakes were based on outdated sources published before LiDAR imaging was widely used. The paper by Holiday et al. referenced my 2017 paper in geomorphology a couple of times. One paragraph said, Zamora 2017 promoted an earlier argument that the bays are aligned and oriented toward the Great Lakes, see Firestone et al., 2010a, page 41, concluding that they resulted from impacts by glacial ice ejected from the Laurentide ice sheet following an ET impact. Another paragraph said, preposterous fringe ideas continue to plague the YDIH. In a non-peer-reviewed essay, Ballard 2017 hypothesized that excavated broken mammoth bones from the U.S. Midwest are evidence of a Laurentide ice sheet impact and ice boulder ejecta, see also Zamora 2017, that crashed down killing mammoths across the continent and forming craters. These craters are well-documented ice melt landforms known as kettles. It is very clear that Holiday and other opponents of the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis think that I am plaguing the hypothesis with preposterous French ideas. In 2024, Sweatman, Powell, and West, who support the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis, wrote a paper that rejects the claim of Holiday et al. that they have comprehensively refuted the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis. They say, the scores of peer-reviewed articles in dozens of peer-reviewed journals from hundreds of researchers, many of whom were not members of the core research team of Firestone et al. 2007, have corroborated the YDIH and replicated the key evidence dozens of times. Refuting a hypothesis that is so well established should require compelling new evidence and a plausible alternative process. Regarding the Carolina Bays, Swedman, Powell, and West say the Carolina Bays are one of the most puzzling features of North American geology. Swedman, Powell, and West complain about the use of the pejorative label fringe by Holiday as unscientific, but nevertheless, they discuss my 2017 geomorphology paper under the heading More Pseudoscience, Fringe Evidence, and Conjecture. Swetman, Powell, and West wrote, We support Holiday et al. in questioning the work of J. 2019 and Zamora 2017. I suppose that the reason why my name was associated with J. was because J.'s paper cited my 2017 publication. It seems that both the opponents and the proponents of the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis are against me. In this contentious debate, I have to defend my ideas with objective facts. My new paper is a reply to Holiday et al. regarding the Carolina Bays. The abstract says, the paper by Holiday et al. 2023 tries to establish that the major axes of the elliptical Carolina Bays are not oriented toward the Great Lakes and that the bays are well-documented ice melt landforms known as kettles. Both of these propositions are inaccurate. The paper relies on outdated references from before LIDAR was in common use and before the Nebraska basins had been discovered. The orientations of the Carolina Bays can be determined accurately by fitting them with ellipses using the least squares method. The argument that the Carolina Bays are ice melt landforms can be dismissed by referencing the extent of the Laurentide ice sheet and permafrost during the last glacial maximum. My new paper demonstrates that the Carolina Bays are geometrically elliptical by fitting them with ellipses using the least squares method using an open source Python program. My paper also describes the colorized LiDAR topography by Michael Davies. The subscribers to my YouTube channel are familiar with similar images and methods that I have discussed for many years. Before publishing my paper, the editors of the journal contacted Holiday to get his response. Holiday and two co-authors replied, The author misconstrues our comments. We simply present the research and opinions of other investigators. We are well aware that the landscape of the Atlantic coastal plain in the southeastern United States was never glaciated. Holiday and his co-authors say, The author makes the following statements regarding our comprehensive refutation of the YDIH HEA 2023. Zamora 2024 abstract, the paper by Holiday et al. 2023, tries to establish that the major axes of the elliptical Carolina Bays are not oriented toward the Great Lakes and that the bays are well-documented ice melt landforms known as kettles. 
Samora 2024, Section 5, HEA implies that the Carolina Bays are well-documented ice meltdown forms known as kettles. Both statements are incorrect. We do not try to establish either argument. And to our knowledge, no one has ever considered the bays to be glacial kettles. We are well aware that the landscape of the Atlantic coastal plain in the southeastern United States was never glaciated and we would never argue otherwise. Our argument, based on abundant data, is that the Carolina Bays are older than the onset of the Younger Dryas chronosome and that there is no credible evidence that an extraterrestrial impact resulted in the formation of the bays. We also simply summarize what others speculate. The conclusion of my paper says, Fitting ellipses to the Carolina Bays by the least squares method makes it possible to determine the geometry and the orientation of the bays with great precision. The conical shock waves of projectiles moving through a viscous medium offer a plausible mechanism for consistently creating conical cavities that produce mathematical conic sections in the target material. The random forces involved in aeolian lacustrine or ice melt mechanisms cannot guarantee the consistent production of elliptical structures. Now that the mathematically elliptical geometry of the Carolina base can be confirmed in an objective way, it may be possible to budget some resources to study their potential origin of secondary impact cavities by mapping their orientations, finding more instances of inverted stratigraphy in the rims, and looking for erratic boulders or glacial till material at the apex of the basins. The description of this video has a link that you can click to read or download a PDF of my paper free of charge until March 15, 2025. Thank you for joining me in the study of the controversial Carolina Bays. Ask your geology professors to discuss the Carolina Bays because they are the most prevalent geological structures in the Atlantic coastal plain. There's a link to the LiDAR visualization tool by Michael Davies in the description of the video. My book about the Carolina Bays is available at Amazon. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Bays and other scientific topics.